hi this is Kiran in this video I'm gonna demonstrate how to create rate pool and volume on px 300 the Lenovo iOmega NAS device so let us get started so in our demo I'm gonna use a px 300 d device with the IP address and uh, I'm gonna create uh, you know a RAID with RAID 5 uh, along with volumes and shares and uh, I would just gonna demonstrate how to do step by step so let us get started so I've already uh, logged into my NAS web console so this is the web console you should receive or you should see once you log into the NAS device with the IP address of the NAS and uh, you would find a lot of options available here so which I'm gonna demo uh, which I'm gonna talk about more in detail in my next videos but uh, I'm gonna restrict myself uh, uh, in this video just to create a uh, raid and uh, you know the various uh, options of raid you have available and how to choose which is the best option for you and how to configure it so uh, so for that what you have to do is just click on storage and go to bribe management under drive management you would find settings click on that so the settings option will give you the right uh, disk write caching options as well as hot spare options so in my case I'm using a px 4300d with one terabyte drives each so four terabyte uh, capacity I have and uh, I'm gonna create rate 5 on it so the disk write caching is nothing but all the data which you write on the NAS directly you know doesn't uh, don't write on the hard disk it stores on the uh, temporary memory or cache then it destages or it writes to the uh, hard disk later point of time so what would it give you a functionality is that it would give you a better write read and write performance however there is a difference uh, there is uh, you know a drawback of this option for example you are using this option and you do not have uh, UPS or power backup then you will lose your data which is not been written to the hard disks and, uh, and the, you know this is not recommended when you don't have any power uh, you know backup so the various options available with this option is always disabled where the disk write caching will be disabled and uh, enabled with UPS for example you have UPS connected and uh, the device has power uh, UPS backup then enable with UPS always enabled though you want yeah I mean you don't have any power backup but still you want to use it you can enable it and um, uh, you know if you have multiple uh, drives for example now I'm using a px4 300d for example if I have a px6 300d where it comes with six disks and uh, if I want to configure RAID 5 with four drives and the remaining two drives as hot spare so the hot, hot spare what happens uh, basically is the moment any drive fails in a RAID the hot spare would trigger and it would incorporate with the you know existing RAID and then the later point of time you can replace the failed disk so that is how so this is to make sure that or to minimize the risk of failing the data or data failure or RAID failure so in our case uh, since I have four drives I'll not be able to demonstrate uh, you know using hot spare method but if you have multiple drives you can select this option click apply so going back to the uh, storage pool uh, the storage pool name can be anything maybe sp0 and the protection the protection is very important uh, you know while configuring you should make sure that what protection level you want to have in your environment and what best suits in your environment in terms of data protection and accessibility the space usability so uh, the parity RAID 5 it gives you RAID 5 gives you a single drive uh, failure for example you have four drives one drive failed you will be able to access your data in a degraded mode however if two drives fails at one time then the RAID 5 will not be able to protect the data and you will lose your data then uh, the second option which is mirror stripe mirror stripe is uh, you know mirror plus stripe which is uh, RAID 10 
RAID 10 would uh, protect you protect uh, from two drive failures at single time however the usage or the, the space usage will be less comparing to RAID 5 so which means RAID 5 might give you 3.6 uh, uh, almost you know in my case it's 4 terabytes so it might give me 2.7 terabyte uh, usable capacity however uh, RAID 10 would give me 1.8 uh, TB usable capacity because what it does uh, how do you calculate is RAID 5 it's 3 uh, 4 minus 1 which is 3 disks for uh, data and RAID 10 is 4 minus 2 which is 2 disks for data and um, the second third option which is RAID 0 it doesn't give you any protection so it would just write the data stripe and uh, in this case of RAID 0 if you lose any single disk you will lose your data and uh, the RAID protection none it means there is no protection at all and it just works as RAID 0 it writes the data across the disk and uh, if you start losing uh, you know if your disk uh, fails at any point of time then you lose your data so those are the you know four options available for px 4 300 d with four disks uh, for the data protection so in our case i would select uh, parity rate 5 and the next option available enable periodic consistency check is nothing but uh, this is uh, you know a health check of rate which means every month you know at standard uh, time the rate would start and uh, you know the periodic consistency the consistency between the four drives the parity information will be checked and if there is any parity information is missing on any of the disk that will be written from other disks available with the parity information the below option the second one create commonly used shares are nothing but you know uh, this option would create default shares like backup movies uh, such kind of so you you know you know you don't want to have uh, some default shares created while creating a raid pool or raid pool you can unselect it or you know you want to have those shares just select this option and in my case I'm creating raid 5 so I would need four drives I've selected so you check here you see its total drive size is 3.64 TB and uh, the capacity is 2.73 TB so basically this is the capacity i'm getting from the vendor or uh, the hard disk provider and uh, this is the capacity of usable i can use after creating this trade so i would just click on create and uh, it should create the raid 5 for me with the uh, uh, raid 5 storage pool name as sp0 now that the RAID 5 is processed so now you see the parity information is uh, written across the desks so now the protection is 0% so you know it has to complete 100% the parity RAID 5 the total capacity is 2.67 terabyte allocated 1.2 terabyte it's because we have selected uh, you know to create uh, default shares so it has already allocated 1.2 terabyte of space and created some shares for us so now what else option we would get so this is the basic information as uh, i have already explained to you and uh, this is where the volumes so you can create multiple volumes and you can allocate the space to the shares for example uh, in our case this share is a volume that has been already created while configuring the raid you want to delete it you can delete it or you know you want to use it you can use it so let us see what are these shares been available right now so these are some of the default shares being created and uh, you can use almost 1.2 tb space uh, which has been assigned to it and uh, snapshot snapshot future is you know very cool future which uh, comes with 4.0 firmware version so this is where you create a snapshot of a volume so this is a volume you create a snapshot 
so it would take the point of time uh, data of all these shares available under shares volume and uh, you know if somebody accidentally deletes the share from the web interface you can just go ahead and restore from here so uh, let us create a snapshot for this volume create a snapshot so this space reserve of volume so the space reserve volume is nothing but you know how much space you want to reserve uh, you know for that volume you know or for the snapshot so in our case the 20 percent should be fine for example you have 100 gb volume uh, you know the 20 gb space almost like 80 gb is your volume and 20 gb of the snapshot uh, space that should be fine and click apply it should create a snapshot of shares so this is the snapshot of 20 percent space available if i click here i should see all the view snapshots so these are the snapshots available for us and you want to restore you can restore it so basically these options i'll be discussing more in our uh, uh, in my you know videos i'm gonna create later point of time uh, and uh, like i said i'll be restricting myself uh, just to configure the rate on this video so uh, the rate is created so now see what are these shares available and what are these shares been created for us so if i click on shares so by default shares are you know available now you can see and if i want to create one more share i can go to add share i can enter a name of this share maybe share one for my testing and i can enter any any space uh, you know i want maybe you know 5 gb 10 gb or 20 gb something like that and i can create it or otherwise i can create a new volume and the volume name can be you know maybe i can provide a test and a 10 gb space should be fine for me and click create so now i've just created 10 gb share for me and uh, now if i want to access these shares i would go to run command and slash slash the ip address of the nas unit and here we go so I should uh, see all the shares folders. So these are shares folders. You wanna, I, if I wanna copy any data, I can back any of my data to the NAS unit directly. So this is all about configuring configuring a RAID on a PX4300 device. Thank you for watching.